Hello everyone and welcome back to The Wine Steward. It's good to see you again, or at least once again pretend to see you. And we want to tell you about what's been happening around here for the last week or so. New discoveries and events to tell you about, a uh, new sampler to reveal. And at any rate, it's wonderful to be able to communicate with you like this or in any way possible as we continue to be creative and getting together when it's kind of hard to right now. And let's just bring you the, the news right now without any delay and just uh, say that maybe six or seven years ago we were confronted with a dilemma. It just kind of finally dawned on us, what the hell is wrong with some of the folks out there who don't drink sparkling wine except during celebrations? Why does it have to be New Year's Eve or perhaps somebody's birthday in order to pop a bottle of bubbly? So the dilemma we think we helped resolve by all of a sudden putting on our wine bar menu a different sparkling wine every week. A whole glass of bubbly at the very top of the menu was featured every week. We would change it out and uh, sometimes it was more expensive champagne and other times it was sparkling wine from some other part of the world that was not as expensive but still showed great character and represented really nice value at the same time. And we realized that that's all it took. We just needed to get people into the mode of coming upstairs, starting their wine bar experience with a, a glass of sparkling wine. And, and off, off went our, our uh, sparkling wine sales. It really took off from there and people began to be more adventurous. And I think what really helped is that they, because of the wine bar experience and so on, it, they realized that sparkling wine does not have to be champagne that costs $40 and more. You can in fact, achieve really good, thoughtful, uh, complex, and delicious bubbles for $20, sometimes less, sometimes just a little bit more. And so, to prove that point once again, to thank you for observing that, and to say with confidence that we have enough customers who will support this idea, we are putting together a six bottle of bubbly sampler. I'll think of a better name than that, maybe uh, six times fizz, or who knows. But um, over the next 24 hours, we will have achieved inventory in order, in order to support a six bottle sparkling wine sampler. All of these are very good. None of them are champagne. We're only doing that because A, champagne is more expensive and we'll tweak the price a little bit. And B, we want to reserve the whole champagne idea for when? The holidays. We don't know how we're going to do it, but we're resolved to once again put the importer Charles Needle out in front of you in order to show you real live champagne. So this, uh, this sampler that we're putting together means to show you the, the breadth, the amazing uh, selection of bubbles available out there. So let's just tell you about maybe three or four of them very briefly. I am resolved to create a little sheet that will go along with the sampler that will say a thing or two about what the wine is made of, where it's from, uh, who's behind it and so on. But let's just say that in this sampler comes this wine that's brand new for us, and it's been a while since we've had a Cremant de Bourgogne. Cremant de Bourgogne means it's sparkling wine from Burgundy, France, and it uses the Burgundy grapes. Um, in this case, I believe it has good old Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, the main Burgundy grapes, and I think there's a small addition of Gamay. That's the grape of Beaujolais, which some people say is part of Burgundy to its south and perhaps a little bit of Aligote, which is a white grape, also from Burgundy. So you could say it's pretty comprehensively representing the, uh, the, varietal, um, the, varietal, the varietal list of Burgundy. And it's delicious, it's dry, it's, you could say, geographically and stylistically as close to champagne as you get without paying a champagne-style price. So this is brand new for us, Cremant de Bourgogne. It will be in our sparkling wine sampler. We want to show you the breadth, once again, the geographical breadth of sparkling wine. So why not show you a great cava from Spain? Cava is Spain's answer to champagne. It's made the same way. Method Champagnoise is kind of a no-no to use on a label anymore. So we just say Method Traditional. And uh, maybe that'll be explained on the sheet as well. We'll talk about, you know, a few terms without getting too nerdy and technical. But uh, it's important to know that cava is made just like spark uh, the sparkling wine of Champagne, France. Um, this is brilliant, and um, it's also put in because I want to talk a little bit about this term on this particular cava from Mercat. It's called Brut Nature, and that means it's going to be a lot drier. It'll have a little more of an attack than your typical sparkling wine, your typical cava from Spain. 
So that's, uh, it's an effort to show you wine from another place and yet another sparkling wine term in one bottle. How about that? This is an old favorite. We've carried two or three vintages of it. It has to be part of our sampler. It has to be, otherwise I'm not buying it. This is from a producer named Pierre Bees. The only problem with this gorgeous wine, hardly a problem at all. The only problem is this label just doesn't show well on camera, sorry. But this is from the Loire Valley. We are having yet another Cremant. We'll talk to you about what Cremant means. Uh, like that term, we're hearing it a lot. Cremant d'Alsace, Cremant de Loire, and so on. But, so we'll talk about Cremant and just tell you that this is 100% Chenin Blanc. It's bone dry. It comes from an area called Savanier. And you who have had it already know it's great. I think it's the most complex sparkling wine we sell downstairs next to Champagne. So that's from a producer, Pierre Bees. We also want to bring you California in order to, you know, tout something local. And it might be surprising for you to see a La Crema product at the wine steward. La Crema, of course, is a larger producer of very, very good wine, but usually the stuff of, let's say, the grocery store down the street. I don't think this appears down there. It's made in smaller amounts. I don't think the grocery folks even know this exists. This is a beautiful Russian River, site-specific, sparkling wine using Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, made like champagne, and it's really lovely wine. It's a, it's a Brut Rosé, so it has a very delicate pink tint to it. Totally dry, wonderful wine. There are two others in that sampler that I can't show you today because they're arriving tomorrow. One of the wines is gonna take us to Austria, and the other will take us to South Africa of all places, but we're having a great time with sparkling wine from there. We're getting great character for a very nice price from South Africa with sparkling wines, pretty cool. So by tomorrow, you're gonna be able to see this sampler on our website and it will cost, I think, front price, top price, $129.99. You wine club members get it for less. So $129.99 is basically the combination of the six prices shaving off a little bit and club members will get it for 10% off of $129.99, which I think is a hell of a deal for six bottles of very, very good bubbly. But wait, there's more. If I can peer over to my calendar, I will see that on, October 1st, October 1st at 6 p.m., we will actually discuss all six of these wines in a Zoom event. How's that? Your purchase of this sampler allows you to be able to participate in that Zoom event if you'd like. If you don't want to hear me talk about bubbly for one hour, you don't have to check in. But if you do, just let's make sure we've got your email address written down so that we can invite you to a Zoom event that gives you a little more backup information about the six bottles of sparkling wine in the sampler. So it's pretty cool. You can look at this as only a sampler of really good bubbles or and or you can uh, include yourself in this Zoom event that will elaborate on the wines. I'll get all six of them open. I would not expect everybody out there to open six bottles of bubbly for uh, just two or three or four of you in one evening. I know I could handle it, but um, I don't know if I even have enough stoppers to accommodate all that. So the main point is you'd be able to hear about all these wines in your sampler. So it's meant to be useful that way. So look forward to the sparkling wine sampler, $100, uh, um, yes, and it's $129.99, and it'll come down from there. It'll be on our website no later than tomorrow, and you'll be able to pick it up then and any time thereafter. And let's just tell you now about some food items we've just brought in. This is a brand new bar of chocolate that you could say is very multinational in source. It uses cocoa beans from Rainforest in Peru, and it uses a sea salt from Ibiza, Spain. Uh, that's one of the Balearic Islands uh, belonging to Spain, along with Menorca and Mallorca in the Mediterranean Sea. And so you've got sea salt from Spain, you've got great cocoa beans from Peru, and this wine is made in Berlin by one of the greatest chocolatiers of Germany. So uh, three different countries at least are in on this, and now we are too, because it is freaking great. It's one of the best chocolates I've ever tasted. I look forward to you taking us up on checking out this Sal de Ibiza. It's a, a salted chocolate. Not too much salt, but enough so that you can, you know, it, it works well with the sweetness. Delicious stuff. This is to also announce the return of a cheese that many of you have already enjoyed, but we just want to let you know that it's back. It's a camembert, but it's not just any camembert. It's rather unique in that it is made in Italy from buffalo milk. So it is made in Lombardy, Italy, and I can tell you, it is gorgeous. It's clean and creamy. It reminds you of brie when you see it. Um, and in fact, the texture on the outside is like brie, but when you warm it up, it'll get kind of runny on the inside and wonderful to dip a great cracker or a crust of bread into. 
So check out this Camembert Bufala from Lombardy, Spain. It is back. We're very proud of this gorgeous cheese. It rocks. This is to remind you of something that we first told you last week. This rather mundane looking tub is our safe way of delivering samples to you. We will have a little sample area in our cooler. Uh, once a week, we will change it out and offer you two more things to try from our cheese and meat cooler. And this time, when you reach in there and grab the little tub of samples, you'll be experiencing a cheese that we've carried for quite a while now. This is called Amuse or La Muse Gouda. And it is a two year old Gouda that's almost as hard and kind of granular or crystalline as good old Parmigiano cheese. And this is, uh, I think, much more complex in flavor. You can kind of tell by that rich, almost orange color. And many of you already know about this. It's a reminder that we're carrying this cheese and we found out that it tastes just wonderful with this brand new salami from Denver, Colorado. This is just, uh, you know, salami is sourced all over the place. And, there's a lot of large producers of it, but we want to tell you about this Elevation Fennel Pollen Salami made in Colorado, made with heritage breed pork, raised with no added antibiotics or hormones, vegetarian fed. I am not a vegan, I'm not a vegetarian, but I have made it my personal policy to eat only vegans and vegetarians. So I am glad that these pigs were fed nothing but vegetables. That's nice. And I can also tell you there's no nitrates and nitrites. This is about as healthy as you can get with salumi. Uh, besides the fact that it is freaking delicious and you get to try before you buy by picking up one of these tubs. We just found it to be the perfect partner for the Lamuse Gouda. So you may want to get both and see for yourself. Try before you buy. Let's get into three wines that I'm very proud to have just brought aboard. One of them is going to make many of you very excited. You've been asking for months, when's it back, when's it back, when's it back? It's back. This is a wine, the label of which you may not recognize because it looked different for a few other vintages. But this wine has been to our wine club. Uh, gosh, I think the White Wine Club has seen this like three or four years in a row. This is the newest vintage. We got a lot of people excited about it when Tom Kelly represented Italian wines at our very first Zoom event back in, gosh, when was that? July, June, July, I think. And we promptly ran out and we promised a boat is coming, a boat is coming. It's going to be here in August. It wasn't. It's going to be here in September. It finally is. We have this wine back and we fulfilled all of you who ordered some of this and our orders were not totally filled for you. You can now... If you were Zoom participants, come in and grab your wine. And we bought some extra for the rest of you. For the time being, we have this wonderful wine, which is made in the Suave region. It cannot be called Suave because it's frizzante. That means it's slightly bubbly. So this is a sparkling, semi-sparkling wine that won't be in our, our uh, sampler pack, incidentally. I kind of wanted to squeeze it in there, but there's only so much room in a six pack. Uh, at any rate, this wine, but many of you loved, all of you have loved to have had it. There's no argument about it. Low alcohol, frizzante means it's half sparkling. It's kind of like a Chocolina from Spain or a Vino Verde from Portugal. And for the time being, it is here. Garganaga, frizzante, get in on it. It won't be here for long. I'm going to cause some trouble with that wine. People hate it when we run out of things, but that's the glory and the tragedy of good wine. They only make so much of it. Let's now tell you about this wine, which has an interesting and slightly sad story behind it. This is a white wine from France, from the Savoie region. In fact, the sub-region of the Savoie that it comes from is called Apremont. Apremont is, in fact, a wine region that saw a disaster of sorts. In 1248 AD, in the middle of the night, villagers heard a rumble and then a roar, and then many of those people ceased to be. In fact, five Little villages or hamlets were entirely wiped out and covered by a landslide. Half of the mountain that is behind this wine region, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a big mountain. There's only half of it now. Half of it totally collapsed, wiping out villagers, villages, and village animals, and leaving behind terroir, you could say. And this is, in fact, the terroir. This is the land uh, now on which this wine grows. So this is made of a grape called Jacquer. Jacquer is not a household term, but it is the grape, really, it's the prominent white grape of the Savoie region, which is in eastern France. The Tour de France visits it every year and uh, was hanging around there, I think, a couple of days ago. It's just a beautiful area, lots of lakes. You're in the, uh, the foothills of the Alps, essentially, when you're in the Savoie area. 
This is a new one for us. We've carried Apremonts before, but this Apremont is made by a producer named Ranvier. And once again, the grape is Jacquer. I'm trying it at room temperature because great white wines can be tried that way. I'd rather have this cold, but I want to fully know this wine. So why not start at room temperature and then I'll chill some down for later. Cool, man, that's a lemon limey, beautiful nose. You know, when Steve was working here, he would call Apremont his gin and tonic wine, if that makes any sense to you. If you're a gin, a gin tonic fan, then you will understand what he meant when he called this his gin and tonic wine. Low alcohol, it's like smelling Mountain Dew soda without the gooey sweetness. Totally vibrant. Wow. Hmm. It's clean in the front, almost tingly. It gets a little breadth in the mouth, in the middle, and then poof, it's gone. It's just, just like Kaiser Soze, poof, he's gone. Wow. Well, now we only have 23 bottles of this because this one's staying with me. And I know we can get more next week. So wipe us out of uh, Ranvier Apremont from the Savoie region. Chill it down. It loves a warm day. It loves heavy foods because it is light, so you can pair it with rich foods. This is the region where raclette and fondue are celebrated. So what do they have with it? They don't have a heavy wine with it. They have refreshing wine with it. So the final thing to tell you about is the arrival of another wine that I've been waiting for for not years, but decades, really. I told you a couple of weeks ago that we were celebrating the return of Chalon Chardonnay. Well, now its counterpart, the great Pinot Noir of Chalon, is back on the sore shelves after probably 15 years of not being here. It's been that long. I've got my Pinot Noir glass ready. Just to reiterate a little bit, telling you about a region that is super unique and that it's Monterey County, but it's nowhere near the San Jose Highlands. It is nowhere near the valley floor of the Salinas Valley. You go down 101 to Salinas, a little farther down to let's say Soledad, you get off Highway 101 and head east, and um, you traverse lettuce fields and such, and then all of a sudden you're heading up, up, up on a little country road. All of a sudden a little country road becomes a one lane road. And then finally, when you're way the hell up there, almost to the Pinnacles National Monument, which is depicted on this label, you are turning left onto a driveway that's all dirt and probably traversing the vineyards of Shalon for about two miles on dirt driveway until finally you find this tasting room, which I did a few weeks ago. And uh, after all that, after signs promising the place was open, get all the way to the tasting room door and it's locked. Doggone COVID virus. At any rate, if I can't have it there, I was determined to have it here. This is a beautiful Pinot Noir that you will be surprised by price-wise. I think we have it at starting at $23.99. You Wine Club members get a 10% discount. By the way, if you want to keep using our website, you Wine Club members get 10% off everything on there by putting in a code. If you don't remember your Wine Club code, just let us know in an email or give us a call and we'll give you that code and you can apply it and then boop, you get the 10% off. This wine is worth $23.99, but okay, we'll give it to you for less if you're a club member. Thank you for being a, a member here. What are you getting from this wine? This wine at 1,800 feet above sea level, unlike the valley floor way below, which is nearly sea level, grown in deep, decomposed granite and limestone. And that's why somebody was crazy enough to put a vineyard way the hell up there where there was no electricity, there was no water and things had to be trucked up and uh, generators had to be purchased and so on just to get this place operating at first. What a beautiful nose. This has beautiful cherries and a, an element of soil. And uh, you know, you could say earthy. But when you say earthy, what kind of earth are you talking about? Are we talking about dust or wet earth or dry earth or powdery earth? Uh, does it smell like clay? I think earthy is pretty comprehensive, it's a pretty broad term. So in this case, it's kind of a, a, a dirt clod kind of a smell, which might sound off putting, but if you put cherries in there too, and sagebrush, you've got complexity that is irresistible. That's what's happening here. The nose is honest to Pinot Noir. This is not souped up, nor is it light. It is appropriate appropriately sized to what you're smelling and what you're tasting. The size of the wine, the way it feels in your mouth, matches nose and actual flavor. 
This Chalon Pinot Noir could cost a lot more. We could raise the price. We won't. We hope you will try this Pinot Noir along with that great Chardonnay we've been talking about. I just want to reiterate that we'll be doing a Zoom event with sparkling wine pretty soon here. In the meantime, you can buy the sparkling wine sampler, six bottles of bubbly from all over the world as of tomorrow. Be looking for it on our website or walk right in with a mask on and get it that way. Remember the street will be closed once again this weekend and we hope you will shop either by finding a parking place somewhere out there or just coming to the back parking lot, giving us a call and saying, I'm here for my curbside in the back parking lot. Keep up the good work. Thank you for being wine steward customers. We appreciate everything you're doing. Thanks, have a great weekend.